All right, here we go. We're going to be representing data graphically today. This is another one where there's a few that I can't do in here. It's just better to do them in class, um, but you'll get the idea and be okay. So first off, we have curious about caps as Claire collects bottle caps and keeps them in plastic containers. Write one statistical question that someone could ask Claire about her collection. So be prepared to explain your reasoning. So something she could ask her, you might be thinking about, she might ask, um, what is the most common cap color? Okay, you have to take them out, you have to count them, compare them to see what was the most common cap color. You could do common cap color, you could do cap size if you wanted to, right? You could even do maybe a cap type. Some might be flip lids, some might be screw lids, I don't know. So there are different things you could compare there, okay? So there's lots of ways to kind of compare this, and what we're gonna get at today is different ways that we could make these comparisons, and then different types of graphs we could create to compare them or represent those different populations. Okay, I'm gonna skip number two, because number two wants you to look at a picture of a, uh, of a jar of caps and then do some uh, guessing yourself and as a class make a dot plot to show how many caps you think are in it and organize your information so I can't do that with you today because I don't have a class to work with today to do that so I'm gonna move on to the next one you'll be okay if you, if you weren't here and miss it that's all right okay Priya wants to know if basketball players on a men's team and women's team have had prior experience in international competitions she gathered data on the number of times the players were on a team before 2016. So on the men's team, there were um, one guy had been on a team three times, zero, 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 one time before, zero, 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 zero. So lots of people had never been on a team. The women's team, we had two times before, three, three, one, zero, two, zero, and so on. So did Pry collect categorical or numerical data? Okay, in this case here, we would say that she collected numerical data, not just because it's a number, but it's also gonna be something we can compare. We can compare how many zeros, how many ones. We can do some work with it. So we're gonna say numerical. Now let's organize information, the two basketball teams, into these tables. So we're gonna take what's here in this chart and we're gonna put it in here, when, men's and women's. So how many number of prior competitions uh, were zero for the men? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten men had zero prior competitions before they made this team. We had one, had one prior experience. Nobody with two. We had one person with three, oops, one person with three, and nobody with four. For the women, zero was one, two, three women had no prior experience with the team. We had one, two, three, four people had one year of experience before. For two, one, two, we had two people with two. We had one, two, three people with three, and nobody with four. So graphically, we're taking this information that from this chart, and we're showing it right here with what we call maybe a, a frequency table. Frequency is gonna be how many times it tends to happen, okay? So we take the data that we have and we see how many times or how frequently it came up. Frequency of having zero was 10, and we had one one and one three. We can take that same frequency in the table and we can turn that into a dot plot, all right? So how many men had zero? Well, there was 10, so we'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We had, no, we had uh, one person at one, nobody at two, and one person at three, and that's our dot plot, <laughs> okay? Great plot. For the women, we had three at zero, we had one, two, three, four at one, two at two, three at three, and nobody there. So that's our dot plot for both the men and the women's teams, again, looking at the frequency. So, the next question, question four, says, looking at the dot plots, what do they tell you about the competition participation of the players in the men's team? Well, on the men's team, what it tells us here is that very few had prior experience. Had prior uh, playing experience on a team, 
okay? And in fact, only two, so two out of 10, had, or two out of 12 actually, had played before. Well, that's a pretty small number, isn't it? For the women, we can see that many had prior experience. Okay, and in our case here, that's nine out of 12 people, or about three-fourths, had prior experience compared to the men with two twelfths. So a lot more women had played on the team before uh, 2016. And that's just data you can look at and see. But again, we're just taking the data and we're comparing it and looking at it. And based upon what we see, we can make some conclusions about what's happening in these different situations. All right, let's take a look at activity number four. So says, Kieran wants to know which three summer sports are the most popular in his class. So three sports are the most popular in his class. He surveyed his classmates on their favorite summer sports and collected all these responses. So there's a lot of different responses there, aren't there? Now this information here is not very well organized, is it? So we want to go ahead and put the our information in a different order so we can kind of talk about it and compare it. First of all, is he collecting category or num number data, categorical or num numerical? Remember, categorical is type, and numerical are numbers that we can compare and work with. In this case here, we see a lot of different types. So we're gonna go with categorical because we have all these different groups of things that he's looking at, gymnastics, track and field, swimming. Yeah, we can count them, and that gives you a number, but we're really talking about the different types that people like. So we take that information, we're gonna put it into this table here, sport and frequency. And we're gonna put it in alphabetical order, okay? So we have basketball is one thing. I'll shorten this up here. We have gymna uh, sorry, gymnastics is not next. <laughs> we have basketball, we have diving, we have gymnastics, we have rowing, we have soccer, we have swimming, we have track and field, and we have volleyball. Those are our options there. So now when you go back and you add these up and see how many are in there, we have two that like basketball, three that like diving, five gymnastics, two rowing, two soccer, five swimming, seven track and field, and four volleyball. So when you take this data, categorical, and you group it like this, we can see the frequency of responses for each one of those different categories. And now using that, we can use this information then to organize it into a bar graph and make some more comparisons. So represent the information on the tables as a bar graph. So writing this out here, we had, I'm gonna write B for basketball, D for diving, we had G for gymnastics, rowing, we had soccer, we had swim, we had track and field, and volleyball. Now basketball was two, so we're gonna go up two bars there. Diving was three, so we're gonna go up three to there. Gymnastics was five, so we go up to five and there. Rowing is two. I'm just skipping a space so I can see a little better. You don't have to skip a space. I just have room, so I went ahead and did that. Soccer was two. Swimming was five, back up to here again. Track and field was seven, five, six, seven. And volleyball was one, two, three, four. All right, so that's where we are there with our bar graph, okay? How can you use the bar graph to find how many classmates Kieran surveyed? Well, if you wanted to do this right, what you would do is you could list right above each bar the number that each bar represents so you can visually see it real quick. And then we'll take those numbers and then we add those numbers up. And when you add those up numbers up, two plus three plus five plus two plus two plus five plus seven plus four, we say that we find out there were 30 all together. So we put it right above the bar, showing what that bar represents, and we add them up. Now study the bar graph and answer Kieran's questions about the top three summer sports in his class. Then make at least one other observation. So what do we see? The top three. The top three was track and field was the number one with seven votes. And we see that swimming and gymnastics uh, tied for second place. We have the same number of votes there. 
Another observation you could make is that uh, only two people each like soccer, rowing, and basketball for the summertime. Um, you could also note that of this here, we have 10, 17, so 17 out of 30 like the top two choices. So over half the people like the top two choices. Just some things you can see. Now, could a dot plot be used to represent Kieran's data? So could you make a dot plot here? Remember, a dot plot is going to be numerical, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do we have any numbers there? I mean, think about it. If I took the basketball, we know that's 2, and I put it right there. And I put rowing, which was 2, right there. Does this make any sense? Right? Not really. Because these dots represent now a category, it doesn't work. So you can't do it all the time. The dot plot's going to be for numerical data. Numerical, not categorical. So keep that in mind. Different data charts work better for things. Categorically, bar graphs work great. Dot plots work for numerical stuff, not categorical. All right. So in summary, when we analyze data, we're often interested in the distribution, which is information that shows all the data values and how often they occur. So in the previous lesson, we talked about 10 dogs. We can see the distribution of the, of the dog weights in a table like this. We can see all the different dog weights. And then we can see the frequency of how many dogs weighed that much here. The frequency refers to the number of times a data value occurs. So the more times it happens, the more frequent it is there. So we can see in this case here, a lot of dogs weighed, um, in this case here, three dogs weighed seven pounds, okay? You can take that data, and if you plot this data over here, which you can do at times, you can see we had one dog that weighed six pounds, we had three dogs that weighed seven pounds, we had uh, two dogs that weighed 10 pounds, one that weighed 30 something, two that weighed 35, and one that weighed 36. You can plot that same data this way, so you can do that there, right, because this is uh, numerical data there, and we can look at that and it help us compare. And here, with this dot plot, dot plot, we can we can compare the frequency values by looking at there as well. Okay, so it does help us do some comparisons there. The distribution of categorical data, though, can also be shown in a table. So categorically shown in a table for the breed of dogs and how many there might be. You can have a frequency with a with with categorical. It's okay, but when you create a a graph, another way to do it, we'd probably use a bar graph there. So we can visually see how the frequencies work. Nine pugs, nine beagles, 12 German shepherds, and you can visually see how those categories compare with one another. Remember that in a dot plot, a data value is placed according to its position on the number line. In a bar graph, however, categories can be listed in any order. They don't have to be in order. You can have nine, 12. We could organize these however we want. Sometimes it's alphabetical, it doesn't really matter so much. All right, that's it for today. So take a moment to work on your homework and we'll come back and check it together in just a few minutes. All right, here we go, homework lesson three. A teacher drew a line segment that was 20 inches long on the blackboard. She asked each of her students to estimate the length of the segment and use their estimates to draw this dot plot. So one person thought 16, three thought 17, one 18, five thought 19, five got it right with 20, and three were a little over with 21. So how many students were in the class? Well, for this we wanna just simply count the dots because every dot equals a person. So you have one, four, five, and then five and five make 15, and three more make 18 students. So were students generally accurate in their estimates? Well, accurate's gonna be 20, right? So in terms of accuracy, five out of 18 were accurate, right? So is that a pretty good? We would say not really. A whole lot were wrong, weren't they? Right, you think about this, 13 out of 18 were wrong. So a lot more were wrong, so we'd say not really. But you could say that overall though, if you put those together, that 13 out of 18 were at least close or correct. Okay, so in terms of being an estimate, because all you do is estimate, I'd say the 13 and 18 were pretty good at estimating. So just depends on how you want to say that. Number two, 
Here are descriptions of data. Select all descriptions of data set that could be graphed as dot plots. Okay. Remember the dot plot is going to be 0, 1, 2, right? And then dot to count those things up so you can compare things. Class size for the classes at an elementary school. Well, every class is a little different. So you might have a class of 20, a class of 21. That could work. You're talking about class size, talking about numbers. Sounds good. The colors of cars in a parking lot. That sounds more like you're going to have a red, blue, yellow, and you could do more of a bar graph there. So no. Favorite sport of each student in sixth grade? Well, that sounds like football, basketball, tennis. That sounds more like one of these kind of charts there. So no. The birth weights of babies born during October. You might have 12 ounces, 15 ounces, whatever it's going to be. Yep, weights or numbers make sense for a dot plot. Number of goals scored in 20 games of a soccer team. So 0, 1, 2, 3. That's a number. Makes sense for a dot plot. Number three, Priya recorded the number of attempts it took each of 12 of her classmates to successfully throw a ball in a basket. So they had 12 tries. How many attempts it took? Make a dot plot. Okay, well, we're going to go dots from 1 to 4, or actually to 5. So make a plot like this. I can make that zero. I can have one, two, three, four, five. And we see how many zeros there were. None. How many ones? One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Twos. We have one, two, three. So one, two, three. Uh, threes. We have one, two, one, two. Fours. One, two, one, two. And one, five. And that's it for that. That's your dot plot. That's all you got to do. Question four, solving each equation. Okay, so for number one, 4a, to get the v by itself, we divide both sides by 9. So that goes away. So v equals 1 ninth. Over here, get w by itself, we divide both sides by 1.37. 0 divided by 1.37 is equal to 0. <laughs> On the next one, we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, 10 over 7. So 10 over 7 times 1 is equal to? 10 over 7. Here we're going to subtract 12.1, subtract 12.1, that becomes 0, that goes away, so 0 equals y. And finally over here we're going to subtract 3 fifths from both sides, so z equals 1 minus 3 fifths is 2 fifths. And we're done with that one there. Number 5, find the quotients. So this is 2 fifths divided by 2 means multiply by the reciprocal. Twos cancel out, and we're left with one fifth. Two fifths multiplied by the reciprocal ends up two over five times five is twenty-five. Two multiplied by the reciprocal cancel cancel equals just five, and five multiplied by the reciprocal equals twenty-five over two, which I could write as twelve point five or twelve and a half if you want to do that. There, it's all good. Number six, our last one, area of the triangle. Area is one half of the base times the height. So we have one half of five times five. Five times five is 25, so half of 25, which is 12.5. Here we have one half of the base times the height. That's one half of 12, which is six. And here we have one half of the base, which is four, times the height, which is four. So one half of 16, which is eight. And that is it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.